get to a certain vintage, and by this time of the day, you need a nap. <laughs> I need some caffeine or something. I'm already there. Oh, God, I don't feel so bad. She's younger than I am. Okay. I'm still in the All right, well, I really like Brian's question, so I'm going to be kind of shuffling back and forth between the ones I had written down and his. I like where Brian's questions went as far as our own background experience and how we brought that into our writing, so I do want to explore that. But, of course, the first question is, Introduce yourself and quickly tell us uh, what it is that you write specifically. We'll start with Jen. Uh, I'm Jen Jennings. I go under the pen name of J. Laurel Jennings. It's actually my name, but that's another story for another time. Um, I have a single book out right now called Apart, and it's, uh, well, we're going to do pitch books later, mm -hmm. but it's it's kind of a murder mystery, um, not murder mystery, sorry, mystery women's fiction genre mashup. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, hi, my name is Martha Jasmine. I have my book called out called The Black Lily. It's urban fiction. It's basically about a guy named Joey Tillman falling in love with two women. And it is very ruthless and horrifying. <laughs> so in, in other words, you, you should have been the other panel. Okay, it doesn't end well. Yeah, I probably should have been in the other panel. I'm a horror writer. Okay. Um, <laughs> mostly with some fantasy thrown in, but I've been writing fiction since 88. I write under the name of Diane Arell because I just, my last name was too hard. <laughs> it made too many jokes. So. <laughs> But, uh, okay, I just want to say that I I represent Jersey Pines Inc. It's a new company. We're a year and a half old. We're a small publishing house. Okay, um, I'm Carrie Gans. I have uh, a book out. It's a middle grade and um, fantasy. And I tend to write science fiction and fantasy on the middle grade and YA levels. My name is Laura Kane. I'm a professional storyteller, author, educator, and since my very youngest years of exploring writing and reading, uh, I've always loved science fiction, so that's my first love. But as I got older and started journaling all my different dreams and all, I got into the idea of shapeshifters, and I decided to span out into YA and, and that sort of supernatural stuff. And then also, as a storyteller, I've also been sharing and doing my own uh, adaptions of Native American stories and family stories. So I also have a uh, children's book, eight years and up, uh, called Rabbit's Tale and other rites of passage. So there's also that anthology as well. Okay, let's get into the good stuff. Why do you write what you write? And you can actually talk a little bit about your inspirations and, and your background that got you into this. So Carrie, you're on first. Okay, um, like I said, science fiction and fantasy. Uh, and it goes back to my very youngest years. The first movie I ever remember seeing in the movie theater, I was seven years old, was Star Wars. My father has no recollection of taking me to see it, but <laughs> I'm like, well, I didn't go by myself. And I know mom would not have taken me. So I think that whole franchise had a huge impact on me uh, and my friends from that, that age. I also read a lot of fantasy. I loved um, Chronicles of Narnia, for mm -hmm. instance, and Madeline Langle's books. Um, Madeline Langle, I, I, the older I get, the more I see her influence in my writing. Exactly. And so um, she definitely was a big one uh, for me. So I think it was just, um, you know, I did Tolkien. I did, I, I just loved all the fantasy and the science fiction stuff when I was a kid, and it's just, stayed with me since then and so I think that had a really that that movie did it for me. Thanks. <laughs> I started reading um, all of speculative fiction because I used to sneak up to my brother's room and he had a whole library of books and I used to steal the books down and read them. So I started reading all of it very early and uh, I'd say my major influences were Harlan Ellison mm -hmm. who was just he, if any reason I became a writer was Harlan Ellison. He was the strongest writer I had ever read, the most dynamic. 
I loved Peter Beagle's The Last mm -hmm. Unicorn. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite book. It still mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And I wrote Love, A Wrinkle in Time, mm -hmm. which That's I good. read very young and didn't quite understand, mm -hmm. but I never forgot it. And then I reread it like my senior year of high school, and I thought, oh my gosh, now I understand it. It was wonderful, but I write short stories. I don't, I've never, well, I've written one novel, but we won't go there. Uh, <laughs> but I, I love the art form of the short story. There are so many variations on what makes a short story mm -hmm. that I just love exploring all of that. Oh, wow, oh, let's see. My first, it's funny, because my first movie I saw in a driving movie fair, Ah. was Idi Amin. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting. However, my first book I read was called Breadsticks and Blessing Places. I cannot remember the author. The book was written in 1988. I believe I was 11, maybe at the time. And in high school, I fell in love with Stephen King when I read Sale and Love. And it's been it ever since. So that's like my go-to guy it comes to reading hmm. um i would say my author influences were definitely harlan ellison frank mm -hmm. herbert mm -hmm. big robert heinlein fan mm -hmm. not all of his books but no. only particular ones yeah. really struck me um asimov mm -hmm. but when it came down to the most interesting unexplored space i always felt that the human mind was the most unexplored space and it's different for all of us so I went into hypnotherapy. I'm a massage therapist and a hypnotherapist uh, by day job. And uh, I find that the space inside our head is the most interesting space of all. So that's kind of what inspired me to, to write this first book. And the interpersonal dynamics and how people work with each other. And um, I just find that the human condition is probably the most interesting one to me. Well, I have some a couple confessions. Uh, I discovered books probably when I was old enough to read, so about eight, nine, and I just decided that I was a sponge because I love science and I love the ocean and I love dolphins. And, and so I just started, that was my thread that got me, oh, if I like this one, I like that one, if I like that. And then I discovered the different authors and I'm also a child of TV. So when it came to science fiction, it was Star Trek all the way. And then I fell in love with Star Wars, but then I fell in love, back in love with uh, Star Trek when they revamped it with all the, uh, the um, special effects and everything. No, they had the original series, but yes, yeah, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, of course, Data being uh, a very most interesting character for me. So, um, but i also very eclectic. So when it comes to reading, the science-based fiction that spread out into science fiction also allowed me to explore other things and the survivalist genre was also interesting for me so um paul um hatchet paulson gary paulson and and jack london and all those were also very instrumental for me in understanding the man versus nature like we talked about earlier and man versus man survival this sort of thing and what if what if you're plunked down in the middle of this or you, you're you have a car accident or whatever and there's nobody there to help you and how do you get yourself out of it all those situations where the character is challenged to be somebody different than who they are simply because if they don't they'll die and i was just fascinated with that so that had a big influence with me all right moving on Uh, have you had to change your story and a genre to fit an age level or a publisher's demand? Mm -hmm. Since we're talking about science fiction, young adult, and, and middle grade and all that, the, I guess the obvious question is, did you set out to write a young adult, or did you set out to write middle grade, or did you just set out to write an adult book that maybe changed along the way because of outside influences? So, you know, let's start with you. No, none of that pertains to me. Oh, no. <laughs> well, all right. Well, but we can expand have, the question. Go but ahead. I have changed stories to get into anthologies. I have made, I've okay. made a lot of stories altered to fit requirements of what they wanted. I've changed the characters. I've changed the whole slant. 
I've, I've actually rewritten entire stories just to get into collections mm -hmm. and anthologies. And it worked in mm -hmm. most cases. Yeah. And it, it's a thrill. It's, it's just a thrill when you've changed it like that mm -hmm. and you get it published. Mm -hmm. It's just a wonderful feeling. I think we'll adapt the question as to, again, when, did you write this book or the story simply because that was what it was, or did you write for a particular audience? And which, in which way did you approach it? So Nadine, how about? I wrote it for what it was. It was just these people living inside my head, okay. <laughs> and they were destined to get out, and I just wrote it for what it was. Okay. And of course, I had to go back and rewrite a lot and take a lot of stuff out. Uh, my editor, actually, who is phenomenal, she's my worst critic, but at the same time, my number one fan, I had to rewrite my whole book in six months. Mm -hmm. That was... What was the biggest challenge of having to rewrite it? The biggest challenge? She wanted you to rewrite it for what purpose? Clarity sake? Clarity. For, for the audience For sake? the audience. Uh, watch a lot of my grammar, okay. tenses, flow. Well, that happens so, to all of us. Yes, but it, <laughs> for someone that's just, not just starting out, but just someone that's new to all of this, it was like, do it now and do it quick. Yeah. And quick was six months. Yes, man. man. I was gracious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard of tighter, tighter time. Yes, yeah, like absolutely. So yeah. now I'm just like, I'm very hungry. I know what to look for. I know how to just execute without even being yeah. bothered. And I know how to stay focused on that. And like a lot of people in here, I do not watch TV. I don't own a television. So I'm not distracted by that. I read everything. I keep new Bless papers. you, lady. Yeah. I keep don't have even since I was a little kid. Even when I was a little kid, I just, I keep newspapers. I still have the newspaper from last week. Don't throw it out. I haven't read it. I need to read it. Mm -hmm. So it can bring me up to date. So that's just where I am. And I just want to say that when you said you had those characters living in your head, yes. Oh my God, it gave me such chills that they had to get out. <laughs> I'm just thinking of how they would do it. <laughs> I think there's a bit of schizophrenia in everything. It's just you're really exactly terrible. right. And I did not want to, I did not want to use that word, yeah. but that's the truth. So, and the other portion of this is OCD. Even when she so. said, as far as the mind, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. actually. It's almost like your evil twin. <laughs> <laughs> you start thinking about people that don't exist, but they exist. They exist and yeah, I gotta give my husband huge amounts of credit. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, if he's feeling well tonight, he'll be out at the diner. You can meet that poor suffering soul <laughs> that bothered to marry me. Um, you, you know, for me specifically, I'm I guess more of a a giant five year old. So I don't do anything that I don't like to do. Okay. Um, and once it becomes a job, I don't do it very well. I just kind of uh, grip my teeth and I do what I have to. So it's important for me to truly engage and enjoy in whatever I'm doing. So when it came to, you know, writing, this premise was in my head. Okay. My friend made a bet with me that I could finish it. I, I have to rise to the challenge. And they've really known nice. me for 30 years, so if anything is more absolutely satisfying it's proving somebody who knows you for that long <laughs> you are so wrong about me um and then unfortunately he knows my psychology so i totally walked right into it because i wanted to i wanted to be able to actually finish something because i'm not known for finishing uh -huh. so i come up with a lot of ideas in my professional life i'm an ideas person i'm more of the person that gets the ball rolling or gives you the nudge or whatever and so I had to keep my own ball rolling and roll it all the way to the finish line, which is why, you know, I, I did what I did. Mm -hmm. um, but in the process, these people in your head become people. They have their own language. They have their own style of delivery. Right. They have their own, you know, they really do have their own lives. And if you keep them in here, it makes you crazy. So, you know, my husband would see me sit there. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I really just don't know of Karen and what he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. These people don't exist. And I'm like, but they do. And I have to make it right. I have to get the yeah. conversation right. Yes. So yeah, I, I completely get that. It is it is a form of, I would say, mental illness. Yes. <laughs> the soap opera of our brain. Mm -hmm. It's honey, we're all crazy. Don't worry about it. We're just crazy in different ways. Creatively crazy. 
Mm -hmm. All right, so the question was, uh, did you write what you wanted or did you write for a particular audience in mind? And of course the story came out first. And uh, driving down, a, this is for Warrior Heart, my science fiction series first um, book. Driving down the road and you see these little driveways that go off into the woods and part of me thinks, what's down there? I want to pull over and go for a walk, even if I'm trespassing. But um, so what if you're driving along the road and you find a body alongside the road? What if you get out and you find out that he's still alive, he's not dead? What do you do? What if he's not human? And that started with uh, Dorinda discovering this area and rescuing him and, and helping him get back home and then getting stuck in his world and well, then it just goes on from there. So at that point, both of the characters were playing off each other and I was a static observer letting them tell me their story. So yeah, like the panster thing versus plotter, they took off and I threw the, in the obstacles and just waited and see what they would do. Mm -hmm. And if they weren't exactly logical in their response, then I had to tweak, either tweak the conflict or tweak the character before they, like you said, Brian, became cement, you know, and then weren't going to be pliable enough. So uh, I just wrote what they were going to tell me needed to be told and what story uh, just organically came out of those conflicts with, between the characters and the situations and the world building that I had done. And... Uh, of course, obviously, it was science fiction. I knew that it was science fiction. There's a spaceship in there. Um, 